Hello, you're talking to Chris Coleman from Step Ahead Software and today we're going to show you how to use Step Ahead Software's NFX product to create flash animations for your websites. Now, flash has typically been a very hard to master tool. Um, some very complicated concepts in the products, in the typical products that you use to create flash animations. NFX changes all that. It puts the power of animations into the hands of the average person and we're going to show you how right now okay we just started up NFX here it is um, you can see it's got typical toolbars um, it's got a stage area uh, it's got scene management and it's got a script editing panel here basically it follows the traditional movie analogy you have a stage and on the stage you can place various actors and up here is all the choices of actors that we can choose let's let's grab some text we've got a text actor now and we can right click that change its contents and say eagles rock it's my favorite rugby league football team the manly seagulls who just won the premiership coincidentally last night so, Eagles Rock is the text we just changed. You can change colors. Let's give it a nice maroon color. Uh, where's some maroon? Is that maroon? No. I don't know. Let's just say. Let's just pretend that's maroon. Yeah, it looks pretty maroony. <coughs> Okay, Eagles Rock. Now, right from the start, we can have a look and see what that animation is going to look like. It's, it doesn't do anything yet, except display a bit of text, so it's not technically animated. But anyway, if we press this Swift button up here, it will generate a Swift file for us, and we can see it. Ah, we'll save our design first. Um, Let's go to my documents and <clears throat> and effects demo and we'll call this one Eagles. Okay, there it is. That's a flash animation. Now there's a little player that comes with an effects that you can quickly see your animations in, or you can choose to preview them in a browser if you wish. There you go. That's a browser with the animation in it. So I'll close that. During development you often find that it's much quicker and much easier to preview in the actual inbuilt previewer in the NFX tool. Alright, so as you saw that animation isn't really animating anything. It's not really doing anything, is it? So the next step is to actually make it do something. Now, let's say we start with Eagle Rock being off the screen. Okay, so initially, when the animation starts, there's nothing there because it's now off the screen. We're going to make that text slide in from the left and come into the stage area. So, what we do with that is we right click on the actor that we want to move and we say add waypoint. Now that gives us an opportunity to place a waypoint for that actor to say where you want that actor to appear where you want it to move where you want it to move to in time and as you can see here the actor is set to start moving from here to here over the first second of the animation so if we press preview it comes in straight away now what if we said well we don't want it to come in straight away we want it to come in we want it to start coming in one second into the animation and stop moving at two seconds into the animation. So if we preview that, we'll see nothing for a second, and then the text moves in. Now what if we wanted to say, oh, we want it to move in straight away, so at point zero in the, anim in the start of the from the animation, we want the text to start moving, but we want it to take four seconds to actually get to its destination. We stretch this waypoint event out so that it's time duration is four seconds and if we preview that we'll see it's moving much slower now 
it's taking a total of four seconds to travel its path. Okay, now what we've done is given an example of one waypoint. There are many different sorts of um, actions you can apply to actors, including fading in, fading out. Let's create another actor. Um, change the contents of that to say premieres 2008. So let's preview that. Okay, that text is there from the beginning. And Eagles Rot is coming in in four seconds again. Right now, we don't typically want text to just magically be instantly there at the start of a scene. Good design says that you, you fade things in or you slide them in. You just sort of like present them gradually to the user. So what we're going to do here is set the initial intensity of this text to zero. It means you can't see it. And previewing doesn't reveal anything. The intensity is zero. In other words, it's invisible. So we need a way to make that visible. And what we do there is that we add, we select the uh, select the actor, and then up in the event manager, we add a change of intensity. So just like the waypoint, it has a start and an end time, and we can tell it what to do in the properties. So the final value we want to be 100%. Currently the intensity is at 0%. We want to set it to 100%. So that's what will happen on the between 1 second and 2 second into the animation. So let's preview that. And you see it fade in there. Okay. Now you can change the profile in which it fades in with. You can have linear fading in. You can have a whole lot of different types of graduation of the fade in. Um, parabolic fade in. <coughs> um, exponential fade in. Let's try some exponential fade in. Hmm. Starts off nice and slow and then comes to a quick finish. Okay, we can also add actions like rotation. So it's not just good enough that we want to fade in. We want to give it a bit of zing. So let's change the rotation. Let's say we do a full 360 rotation after it is completely faded in. Let's see what that's going to look like. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Now this is all pretty simple stuff. It's not rocket science. Anyone with any basic skills can now become a flash animation creator. You don't really need to buy expensive books, buy expensive programs, spend months or years learning the skills. NFX makes it all extremely easy. Now what we've done with text we can easily do with shapes and images. Um, we can have filled shapes of any arbitrary nature got all the usual ability to add curves um, and we can uh, fill these however we like uh, fill style, you can do linear fills, radial fills, let's do a linear fill between maroon and yellow. Let's see what that looks like. Sorry. Maroon and yellow. And there we go. <coughs> let's have a look what that looks like. Okay, basically yeah. Uh, you can do any shape you want with these, any colour. Um, now there's a number of different ways you can set up each individual scene and the scene manager helps you do that.
you can click edit and specify foreground background layers um, tell it that the scene never ends normally by default a scene will repeat after 10 seconds um, you can play a finite number of times At the end of a scene you can specify that it goes to a particular URL or that it goes to another scene indeed it's, it's just very very powerful um, and we'll explore some more of these features in uh, other movies that we'll create to demonstrate an effects. So thank you for your time today and please keep an eye out for future videos. Thank you.